Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word, word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope of salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. Zar, in this state you should expect no good thing from the Most High. You good? All right, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Hey, Melody, charge my phone. Where? My darn jaw hurt. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like oh, you know what I mean? I think crazy. Hey, TJ, come here. Come grab this one. Uh, where are we starting off? Baby, what you got? What, what we got? Where are we starting off? Uh, Can you charge that? Charge that, please. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? First John, what? Do we got? First John, what? what we got? Give me a number. One through five. Uh, three. First John, chapter three, and not. Or, or, or give me a number. What we got? Huh? I said three. She said three two. So you gave him three two. All right, just First John chapter three verse three. That thing easy money too. It is kind of hot up here. I ain't gonna say nothing about it though. Bro, I ain't ready to turn on my AC. I'm liking this low power though. Bro, even even though my power has been uh, unusually high for the last two months. Yeah. Why? No AC. Yeah, because I've been doing the like what? Like one hundred something. Like I do the the year. For the whole year, I paid seventy eight dollars. Don't don't they give you like two or three years where it's high and then it go back? Mm -hmm. No, nope. maybe I gotta redo it. When did you do it? Last year. I don't know. Remember when? You did the the thing last year and it went from seventy dollars to a hundred something dollars. Like just two, like last month, that thing went up. It was always seventy eight dollars. Now it's like one. That's a cantaloupe. That means that they redid, they rescanned your thing, your averages, and they saying your average is high. And that's a lemon. That's seventy eight. That sound nice. Plum? My thing been like 50 something, bro. Purple. What? Yeah. That's what's happening. That thing ain't gonna be 50 something now because I've been running that heater, but Where's that thing's like 50 something. I was like, I've Where's never, like since I've been in the apartment, I've never had a bill that, a power bill that low. I have. I have. Like 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40. The, never. But actually, matter of fact, last year before I did the average, the average thing in the wintertime, mine was 40. I mean, Lord, I have like 7. Yeah, 60 or 7. I broke 40 once. Proud one. This is the uh, first John chapter three, verse three. <clears throat> first John chapter three, verse three. Let's see what the book's talking about. What you looking at Samurai Jack? Yeah. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Uh-huh. Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. Okay. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever is born of God does not sin. He whosoever is born of God does not sin. All right? So now we're going to keep that in mind and we're going to think about what we're about to uh, get into right now. Who remember what we talked about last week? The switch charger. What? The switch charger? Who phone? Oh, you got the S9? When you get the S9? I had the S9 for like six bucks. Yeah. Everything last year. For what? What you got? You don't know nothing about technology. Because my phone broke. Why don't you get a cheap phone? I should have. You got all that phone. You probably ain't even doing nothing with it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even using it. Just sit there. <coughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Use all the. That's like $1,000 worth of technology. Okay, so what am I supposed to do with it exactly? All the stuff that it can do. I don't care about pictures. So why do you have a pit phone that got the best pictures in the world? <laughs> Honestly, I really don't know. 
could have saved yourself some money. You know what I'm saying? Got you a little flip. That's all you need. That's all. You can get yourself a raise. Nah, I need like a, uh, I need like at least like an S six or five or something like that. Yeah, at least a Samsung. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm tired of paying the phone bill, you know what I'm saying, they be getting over on you. So instead of them, you know what I'm saying, like instead of me paying them, I think I'm just going to start putting my phone on my credit cards. Because it's the same thing. Pay it off from my credit card. And I think that's going to end up being cheaper than me paying these phone bills every month. Yeah, because, uh... Are we okay? Yeah, because my phone bill... It's all right for the people to get these tips. Because my phone bill was 70 bucks for years. As soon as I get this phone, they tell me, oh, it's only going to increase 30 bucks. And now that thing's double. Yeah. And I pay 160 something. Yeah. I was like, what happened to 30 bucks? Yeah. And now, I can keep that phone. You know what I'm saying? So if I do it that way, I can keep this phone. That's a good idea. I'm doing that next time. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, either sell it or, you know, whatever. They have a buy one, get one free on an S10. See? You look, exactly. You know, I'm going to go ahead and swipe. Give me two. Where? With Sprint. No. I don't want to go. No, but you going to swipe? Huh? I'll swipe and give me two. You know what I'm saying? Sell both of them, pay off my credit card, and keep the rack. I'm really lying. <coughs> Ain't a bad idea. That's a whole rack. I just gave the rack. Idea. You know what? <laughs> I just got to quit the last one. Ain't a bad idea. Slang them things. So, what we leave off last week? Not even rack. You have two even. 800. Uh, King David. We talking about King David. What happened with King David? Pick it up. Give it to the cotton. My man's was running from salt. All right, so yeah, King David, he had running from Saul, wasn't he? Then as he had running from Saul, he found a couple situations where, you know what I'm saying, he could have got that Saul, but he didn't get him. You know what I'm saying? He was looking at the what the Most High God said, I can't reach out to the anointed, right? So David, being a righteous man, he didn't do it. So then it happened again. You know what I'm saying? The first time he caught him, remember, we were talking about he caught him, he had pooping. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know what I'm saying? Then, then he catch him flipping there, talked him to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Saul was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? We good. You a righteous man, whatever. You know what I'm saying? A little bit later, he caught him slipping again, sleep. Called him out, all his boys. He, you know what I'm saying, got at Abner. It was like, Abner, you supposed to be, you supposed to be protecting the king. You know what I'm saying? You got the king out here slipping. You know what I'm saying? You should be killed for that. Right? But he still didn't get at him. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Then, uh, it came to pass that Saul was looking like, you know what I'm saying, like, I need to know what's about to happen. He ended up calling uh, Samuel. Remember, he resurrected Samuel, or not resurrected, but he uh, he had a medium called somebody with familiar spirits who happened to be Samuel and spoke to him. Samuel told him, "Well, yeah, the most like God can kill your butt." You know what I'm saying? So then, a little bit the next day, actually, Saul went to war, and um, he went to war with the Philistines, and the Philistine called killed his three sons. One of his sons was uh, David's best friend, so killed all Saul or killed three of Saul's sons. And then Saul also got killed. Um, well, actually, he got shot with an arrow, and he he knew that you know what I'm saying that the people would kill him. So he asked his, his uh, armor bearer. He was like, "Go ahead and kill me, so that these these uncircumcised don't come out here and do whatever they want with me." And so uh, his uh, his armor bearer wouldn't do it. So he ended up just killing himself. He just put a sword in place and just fell on top of the sword. So that's where we left off. What we want to do now is just kind of pick up from there and kind of see. After Saul's dead, how do the people look at David? Kind of what happens next? So let's go to uh, let's go to uh, let's go to First Kings chapter one. It's First Kings chapter one, verse one. First Kings chapter one, verse one. I mean, 2 Samuel, sorry. That's what I was going to say, bro. You skipped the whole life of that. 2 <laughs> Samuel, Second Samuel verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, trying to get right on loose with that. Man, I was going to say, David about to die now. Now, it came to pass after the death of Saul... When David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag, it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and right. earth upon his head. So now it's a dude that came out of the camp that was with Saul. 
Right? He is all dirty, you know what I'm saying? His clothes all ripped. You can tell he been through some things. He came to David. Let's see what happened. And so it was when he came to David, he fell to the earth and did obeisance. Mm hmm. Obeisance just means he, uh, he bowed down to him. You know what I'm saying? Kind of worship. And David said unto him, From where comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel. It would make sense that he go to David, right? Why would it make sense that he goes to David? Because David was the man. David was the man. Remember, Saul knew he was looking at David. David was standing right next to him because Saul <laughs> kind of took him in. And as he's standing right next to him, everybody was yelling like, Oh, well, Saul, you know, he killed thousands. But David killed tens of thousands. You know what I'm saying? So everybody knew David was the man. So if Saul go down, so who was the king, who's the next person you going to go to? David. And David knew that. I mean, Saul knew that. That's why Saul wanted to kill David because he was like, man, this man going to mess around and take my kingdom. So now after Saul is dead, naturally, when, he, when the war is over, I'm going to the man who can save us. We just lost, right? We just got our butt kicked. I'm going to the man who I know can whoop these people out. You know what I'm saying? So they go right to David. So I bow down to him, showing him OBS. He's like, yeah, what's going on? And David's like, all right, let's see what David got to say. And, they, and out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, how went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, that the people are fled from the battle. And uh -huh. many of the people are also fallen and dead. Uh -huh. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, is, his son, is dead? Uh huh. And the young man that told him said, I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, and behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Mm -hmm. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and called unto me, and I answered him, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who are you? And I answered, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. Uh -huh. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet. Hold on, we missed something. Go back a little bit. Watch this. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure. Go back a little bit more. He said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me. For anguish has come upon me because my life is holding me. Right? So Saul, this gives us a little bit more of the story. This gives us a little bit more of the story. Right? He set the, he set the, uh, the sword in place and he fell on his own sword to kill himself. But that thing didn't work. So now Saul sitting there with a sword in him, about to die, but not all the way dead. So another man walked by when Saul sitting there almost dead, Saul trying to kill himself. Almost dead, and he was like, yo, go ahead and finish me off, kill me. So remember, he asked his armor bearer to kill him, and the armor bearer wouldn't do it. Then he tried to kill himself. Then the armor bearer killed himself, thinking that Saul was dead. Turns out, Saul was still alive. So one of, another one of the soldiers walked by, and they saw Saul sitting there, and Saul was like, I ain't dead yet, go ahead and kill me. Right? And so that other soldier was like, well, yeah, you just about dead, let me put him out. You know, he just like, I don't want you to sit here suffer. Let me put you out your misery. So watch what he said. This is the same soldier that did that. He telling David this story. He was like, man, look, we just lost. Everybody got whooped out. Saul's son died. Then I saw Saul. He is sitting there on top of his sword. You know what I'm saying? He said, go ahead and slay me. So then, let's see. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. Right? He is looking like, it ain't no way you coming back from your injury. I might as well just kill you. Right? Watch this. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was upon his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. All right? He said, and I took his crown and his bracelet, and who, who did he bring him to? David. Had to bring him to David, right? It only made sense. I'm going to bring it to David. I always thought he was lying. So look, he's going there. He bowed down. He said, yeah, you know I'm saying, look at this. I'm going to bring it to David. Now watch this. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord. And for the old, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. Right? So you look at this. David wasn't happy about this. Everybody looking at it, and they bringing it to David, like bringing the news to David, because guess what? Saul was trying to kill David. So now that Saul is dead, everybody thinking like, oh, this is what David must want. Let me bring him the crown. Right? Let me bring him the crown and be like, oh, look, David, look. Saul was dead. I put him out of his misery. Let's see how David responds to all this. 
And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How were you not afraid to stretch forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Mm -hmm. And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. David had the man killed. He said, you thought it was okay? You thought you could just walk up to me and tell me that you put your hand against the king of Israel, the Lord's anointed? Oh, okay, let me show you something. He had the young man do it. He was like, yeah, get, get, get one of the young boys to go ahead and knock him off. All right? Keep going. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for mm -hmm. thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Uh-huh. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Mm -hmm. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Why would the children of Israel need to know the bow? He said, teach the children of Israel the bow. Why would we need to learn that? Why would it make sense for David to say that? The song of the bow. Huh? The song of the bow. That's what he said, the song of the bow? The use of the bow. The use of the bow, right? Why would we need to have the use of the bow? He got hit with an arrow, right? Our king just got died by an arrow, right? An arrow hit him, made him in a way where he couldn't continue. He tried to kill himself with a sword, right? So we look at that like, oh, we need that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they got pistols over there? Oh, we need one of those. Right? Because now that changes the game. If our king, we know we bad. We know we got it. Saul's a bad man. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't make a mistake. Saul was out there knocking stuff over. If the man Saul could get knocked over with a bow, oh yeah, we need to, know, we need to learn, how, learn how to use that bow and arrow. So now we taught our people. We trying to upgrade our army. Like, that's what these people working with? All right, come on. We need to work with something like that too. Keep going. That's how David was thinking. He was a forward thinker. Tell it not in Gath. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Mm -hmm. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew. Neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back. And the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O oh, Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant has you been unto me. The love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? All right. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, the, the Christians used to always, you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, I think he is gay because he said that past. He is like, you know what I'm saying? You like, you my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, it passed the love of women. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, he's gay. You know what I'm saying? People say that stuff all the time. You know what I'm saying? Now the boys say, you know what I'm saying? The ones that say the stuff, they say now it's gay. You know what I'm saying? What they did, the bros before, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the gay ones. You know what I'm saying? He just trying to tell you, like, you know what I'm saying? I never loved a woman as much as I loved you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's nobody in my life. You number one. Like, you my man. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what, we going down. We good. You know what I'm saying? The homie is just saying, like, that's that's the affinity that they have for one another. Like, they always were with one another. You know what I'm saying? Been through thick and thin with them. Now, he looking at them like, man, my boy dead. You know what I'm saying? And they killed his pops. And I know, you know what I'm saying? I know that, like, he was important to him. You know what I'm saying? So now he made that he made that song kind of talking about him. Keep going. That was in. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, uh before we go to chapter two, let's go to let's go to uh first chronicles. So uh first chronicles and, and king well not not yet kings, but at this point you're gonna see where first chronicles kind of is talking about the same time period. So we'll we'll probably switch back and forth. Let's go to first chronicles thirteen. It's first chronicles chapter thirteen. Like something like that gonna happen when everybody get gathered together. It's <laughs> gonna go through that thing. Such and such, son of such and such, son of such and such. You go ahead. 
There's gonna be a whole lot of names if you <laughs> try to do that thing now. You gotta take it all the way back to trying to connect to somebody. Goodness gracious. This is uh, First Chronicles chapter 13, verse 1. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and hundreds and with every leader. Mm -hmm. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in the land of Israel, and with them also the priests, the Levites, which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves to us. So the first thing that David wanted to do was call out to everybody. Let's get everybody together. You know what I'm saying? The priests too. Let's see what else. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us. Mm -hmm. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. Mm -hmm. He's saying in the days of Saul, ain't nobody pay attention to the ark. He's like, let's, let's go ahead and get it back. Remember, David knew the law. All right? It's always displayed in his actions that David knew the law. Let's see. Keep going. So David gathered all Israel, and all the congregation said that they would do so. This is but, First Chronicles? Yeah. Okay. For the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together and from, from Shihor of Egypt, even unto the entering of Hemoth, mm -hmm. to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerem. And David went up, and all Israel, to Baalah, that is, kiriath Yaim, which belongs to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord. You Lord remember how I got there? Watch it. Go to, uh, what verse is that? Six. Six? Grab, uh, uh, hope, well, read the next verse, and then, and then uh, we're we going to talk about how I got there, to Kyrie's Jerem. To bring up thence the ark of God, of the Lord, that dwells between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God and the new cart out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ahio drave the cart. Watch it. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing with harp and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. This is 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6. We talked about this briefly, but I don't think we actually read through it. So remember, the Ark of the Covenant, let's go through a little bit of the history. Ark of the Covenant originated in the wilderness. It was carried along with our, our tabernacle, right? That was a tent. So we carried it along, and we brought that tabernacle, which was a tent, into the land when we went into the land. It stayed in a place called Shiloh, which was in Ephraim. This is the same place where Joshua uh, dwelled, where he lived. Remember, Joshua, he the one that brought us, led us into the land. So Joshua being the leader of all the people, it was only, it was only appropriate that our, our, uh, our Ark of the Covenant or our, our, our tent, our tabernacle, stayed wherever he was. Joshua dies. But the, the tent stays in Shiloh. The tabernacle, it stays in Shiloh. So then it stays in Shiloh. We start to move on. We end up going fast forward to, uh, to uh, Eli being the priest. Eli's the priest in Shiloh. Everything is happening in Shiloh. Everything making it happen going is going to Shiloh. So then Eli gets into his mess. We talk about how, how Eli got into his mess. He didn't stop his sons. He didn't restrain his sons. Um, and then at that point, the Most High God put a prophecy out there saying, I'm going to kill your son, then I'm going to kill you. So we go to war. As we go to war, we get whooped out in that war. We get whooped out. The people say, you know, you know what we need to do to win this war? You got it. We need to go get the Ark of the Covenant. So they brought the Ark of the Covenant with them to the war. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant with them to the war, then they got whooped out still, and the people took the Ark of the Covenant. They put it in the same room with their guys. That thing got knocked over. I mean, the, the, the thing that the Ark of the Covenant started knocking over all eight, they, they false guys, cracking them and all types of stuff. So then they took it out, and they put it somewhere else. After they put it somewhere else, um, we ended up going and recovering it, and then the people got scared. Well, actually, let's talk about it. You know, so let's talk about this. So... This is uh this is uh first Samuel chapter six verse six. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaohs hardened their hearts mm -hmm. when he had wrought wonderfully among them? Did they not let the people go and they departed? Now therefore make a new cart and take two milk kind on which there have came no yoke mm -hmm. and tie the kind to the cart and bring their calves home from them mm -hmm. and take the ark of the lord and lay it upon the cart and put the jewels of gold which you return him 
which ye return him for a trespass offering in the coffer by the side thereof, and send it away that it might go. And see if it goes up by the way of his own coast to Beth Shemesh. Then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it was not his hand that smote us, it was chance that happened to us. Mm -hmm. And the men did so, and took the two milk kind, and tied them to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. So they had two cows, right? They connected the cows to the cart, and they had them pull the cart. And basically, they had two roads that the cows could go on. They said, if the cow go this way, it mean this thing. If the cow go that way, it means something else, right? So let's see what happens. And they laid the ark of the Lord upon the cart in the coffer with the mice of gold and the images of their emeroids. Mm -hmm. And the kind took the straight way to the way of Beth Shemesh and went along the highway, lowing as they went. And turned not aside to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. And the lords of the Philistines went after them unto the border of Beth Shemesh. Mm -hmm. And they of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. Mm -hmm. And the cart came into the field of Joshua, of Beth Shemite, and stood, and stood there where there was a great stone. And they claved the wood of the cart and offered a, offered a kind of burnt offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Levites took down the ark of the, ark of the Lord and the coffer that was with it, wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on a great stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh, Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrifices to the, the same day unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Ekron the same day. And these are the golden emeroids which the Philistines returned for a trespass offering unto the Lord, for Ashdod one, Gaza one, Ashkelon one, and Gath one, for Ekron one. What verse is that? 17. Let's go back to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 13. So this is where David is trying to pick it up from. Or at least these are the events that happened that led to where David is trying to pick it up from. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might and with singing and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. So they having like a parade, you know what I'm saying? So they bringing it up, they got the ark, they they taking it from from where it was, and now they bringing it down into where are they bringing it? Is it uh, Judah? They trying to take it to Judah. So they bringing it down into Judah because that's where that's where David is. Bethlehem, <coughs> huh? Bethlehem, somewhere in Judah. Yeah. So they bring it they bringing it down into Judah because that's where that's where uh that's where David lived. Now. Bethlehem, we ain't got the maps and everything, but Bethlehem is really close. Like Bethlehem is like right on the edge of Judah. You know what I'm saying? And right, right above Judah, you got Ephraim. You know what I'm saying? So they are like right next to each other anyway. You know what I'm saying? So they just bringing that thing down south a little bit. So they having a parade when the thing's going on. It's a joyous event. David is out there dancing. You know what I'm saying? Getting it in. Watch what happened. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark for the oxen stumble. Mm-hmm. So now the oxen stumble, right? So the oxen is carrying the ark, and it started to stumble. So that means like the ark is shaking now. It's about to fall. So a man named Uzzah, you know what I'm saying, not wanting the ark to fall, he reached out and put his hand and touched it, right? Let's see. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, mm -hmm. and he smote him because he put, for, he put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. So now the man, trying to keep the ark from falling, reached out and touched it, and he died. Right? We always point to this because we talk about intentions. Nothing about this would say he had evil intentions. At the end of the day, most High God ain't thinking about that. He's just saying, I'm about to make an example out of you. Y'all all dancing and playing around and playing with this art, but who doing it the way I told y'all to do it? Y'all notice what we just read, when they sent the ark over, even the Philistines, when they sent the ark over, they were sure to have who lifted off. The Levites lift that thing off, right? That thing went over and the Levites said, okay, let's get this off. That's according to our law. Not anybody's supposed to be out there handling the ark. You, you're supposed to be a Levite and not just any Levite. No, not free. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, come to breaking it down, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's Koat. Koat can't touch the ark. I think it's Koatites, bro. I thought the priest could only touch the ark. No, the priest is the only one who can do sacrifice and touch the ark when it's set up. But when it comes down to, to, to breaking that thing down and, and, and traveling with it, I think it's the Koatites that never do that. The Koatites do the most holy stuff, really. Yeah. 
I need, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a court fight to do that thing. Yeah. So I think I remember where I, I mean, I wish I remember what it was. So we're, we're break it down. It's like it's like Leviticus something. But um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the most I got is like, man, who considering how I told y'all to do it? Like away from what y'all feel like doing. Like it's great y'all all got good intentions, but all y'all making a mess right now. Somebody about to be made example. So it happened to be Uzai. Uzai touched it. Most high guy used him to make an example. Right? Watch how all the people re uh, reacted after that. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. Mm -hmm. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? Mm -hmm. So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. Mm -hmm. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Right? So, after that, David got scared. David was like, oh no, we, we not playing with this. So he was like, man, listen, we just going to leave it at Obed-Edom house. And then Obed-Edom, because he had it at his house, most High God blessed his household for it. Right? So let's grab, uh, what verse we was on just now? Did that, was that it? That's it. Uh, grab Numbers 18. This might be it. David did it right the second time. This is Numbers chapter 18, verse 1. All right, David was trying. David had good intentions. <coughs> Most of God didn't think about good intentions. No, he, he just thinking about, you should know what I told you to do. And that's what I'm looking for. And the Lord said unto Aaron, you and your sons and your father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity yeah, of the it. sanctuary. It said, watch this. So this is Numbers chapter 18, verse 1. He said, Y'all gonna bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. Explain to us how. What? Eli, you and your sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And your brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee and ministered unto thee. Mm -hmm. But thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. That's right. And they shall keep thy charge, and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor you also die. Uh huh. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, for all the service of the tabernacle, and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and the charge of the altar, mm -hmm. that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I behold, I have taken your brother and the Levites from among the children of Israel. Uh -huh. To you they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar and within the veil. Mm -hmm. You shall serve, and I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. I don't think that's what I'm really looking for. I don't think this one break down. Who, who takes what and does what, like all the group. Exodus? I don't know. I'll see if it comes to me. Go to, uh, go to, uh, but that, I mean, that tells us, that tells us pretty much what you know. If you're a stranger, you touch, you know, you handling the altar and you're a stranger, that thing, that thing dead. You gone. Holy thing. Right? That thing wasn't built for you. Right? Most like God said, no, nah, that's for the priests. Right? The priest is supposed to be the one handling it. So even though right here it say only the priests handle it, there's another place where it said who who can break what down. So they we had to travel. And let me tell you, most I God wasn't having the priest carrying nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like the priest, you wasn't about to carry nothing. The, the other Levites was given to the priest, just like I say there, as servants. You know what I'm saying? As a gift. You know what I'm saying? So when it came down to like moving stuff and all that, preacher just wipe, wipe his hand like, all right, well, you know what I'm saying? Do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Them boys got to come. They pack that thing up, pick it up, put the poles on that thing and walk. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the priest's job. That was the other Levites that had to do that. You know what I'm saying? But let's go to, uh, let's go back to, uh, where were we at? God was like, you think it's a small thing that I let y'all handle this stuff? What verse we leave off? Uh, Did we finish, uh, 13? Yeah, we finished 13. Grab, um, grab, grab 15 then. It's 1 Chronicles chapter, uh, 15 verse 1. You alright, son? What you doing? I was down there playing sleep. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched 
for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them has the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. You see the difference? David went back. That's what we have to do. When stuff starts messing up, we got to go back and be like, okay, hold on. Why did that happen? Let me try to figure this thing out. Then we look at the book and we say, oh, this is how God prescribed it. Now David come back immediately with this sudden revelation. All right, don't nobody touch this thing unless you're a Levite. All right? I didn't know what I was doing the first time. Don't nobody touch it unless you're a Levite. You're a Levite, grab it, let's go. Right? Watch this. For them has the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Mm -hmm. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place, which he had prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief and his brethren, a hundred and twenty of the sons of Merari, Asiah the chief and his brethren, two hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief and his brethren, a hundred and thirty. Mm -hmm. Of the sons of Elizaphan, Shimei, the chief, and his brothers, 200. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel, the chief, and his brethren, fourscore. Now watch this, 2 Samuel chapter uh, 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Zakar, can I have some? Here. Alright, it's uh it's uh 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 1. What does the book say? And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Talking about David, right? David is the king now. That the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within curtains. Mm -hmm. And Nathan, Nathan said to the king, Go. Do all that is within thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord. All right, so watch how this happened. Nathan, he's a prophet. All right? David came to Nathan. He is like, you know what? I got this beautiful house. But the ark of the Lord, Lord it's just sitting there. This is the darn tent. He's like, that don't make sense. And then Nathan already knew he, where he was going with it. They were like, you know what? God with you. We all know God with you. Go ahead and do whatever's in your heart. You know God's going to do it. You know what I'm saying? God's going to play it out how you want to. Go ahead and do whatever's in your heart. Then Nathan walk away. He get by himself. Then the message of the Lord came to him. Most High God said to him, watch this. Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? Mm-hmm. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in the tent and in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye me not a house of cedar? Uh -huh. Now therefore, so shall you say unto my servant David, <coughs> Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheep schools, from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. Mm -hmm. And I was with thee wheresoever you went, and have cut off all your enemies out of your sight, and have made you a great name, mm -hmm. like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before time. Praise the Lord. And as since that time, as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, mm -hmm. and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Mm -hmm. And when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of my bowels. Right. And I will establish his kingdom. So pay attention to what he said, what that promise is. He said, when your days be fulfilled, talking to David, right? So he says, when your days be fulfilled, and what? And you shall sleep with your fathers. And you shall sleep with your fathers. It's very important that we pay attention to what the Most High God said. I will set up your seed after you. He said, I will set up your seed after you. Which shall proceed out of your bowels. Which shall proceed out of who? Your bowels. Okay. 
and I will establish his kingdom. So, if you look at that, and you're not paying attention, you would think your next son is going to be the king that I established, right? But if you look at very close, he said, after your days are fulfilled, and you sleep with who? Your father. That means, after you dead, I'm going to take who coming out of your bowels, right? Now, the son he had, of course, was still alive. He became king while he was still alive, right? And we'll read about him. His name is Solomon, right? But we'll look at it. Keep going. That's the promise to the Most High God. That's the promise that the Most High God gave to David. David wanted to build God a house. God came back and was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to build you a house, right? And I'm going to establish the son that come out of your bowels, right? The son that you have that come from you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to establish him, and he going to be king. And that's it. He going to have your house. He going to set up everything. Watch this. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Notice that when most of God make a promise, guess what has to happen before you see it? Death. Just notice that. Like, when most of God, when he be talking to people, he be letting them know, oh, your boy going to die before this happens. Think about it. Abraham. What did he promise Abraham? People going to be in this land. I'm going to give it all to you. I'm going to be father of many nations. <laughs> Abraham died. He didn't see none of that thing. Right? You got to keep that in mind. Sometimes we be looking and hoping and wanting to see stuff and this, that, and other. Most of our guys say, yo, better be dead before you get to see what I'm talking about. Our hope got to be that you'll bring us back and we'll see all of it, though. Right? Keep going. Watch this. I will be his father and he shall be my son. Uh -huh. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. We're going to come back to this. This is all good stuff. Watch this. Keep going. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. Mm -hmm. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Mm -hmm. Your throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So notice what he said. And we're going to just do a quick fast forward. Notice what he said. He said, I'm going to establish your kingdom. All right? And... Yo, uh, he will be a son to me. The one that I establish, he'll be a son to me. And if he mess up, I'm a chastiser. But I'm going to have mercy with him. I'm not going to take away my mercy like I did Saul. Because remember, when Saul messed up, Most High God just took the whole kingdom from him. He's like, okay, I'm going to give it to somebody else. Right? The Most High God saying, with your, with your lineage, I'm not going to do that. If one of your sons mess up, I'm going to get their butt. But it's going to continue to pass down to another one of your sons, right? So it's always going to stay in your bloodline. He said, and your kingdom is going to be established forever. So that's why you see that from this time to the time of Yahushua, there has always been a king of Judah, right? There's, well, let's say, there's, yeah. if there is a king of Judah, there was, it was a, a person in Judah. I mean, it was a, uh, I'm sorry, if there is a king in Israel, it's going to be a person in Judah. Zedekiah, that was it for a long time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There were no more kings, but there were always governors. And guess who the governor was? Yeah. Governor was a person from David. The lineage always followed. So there was a point where there was no king, but there's not going to be a king over Judah who wasn't from Judah. You know what I'm saying? Or a king over Israel who wasn't from Judah. Unless it's some Gentile king who just, you know what I'm saying, just an empire and they ruling us. But they ain't going to call themselves a king of Judah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, we don't recognize him as a king of Judah. You know what I'm saying? So then Yahushua, he raises up. And then after Yahushua, gone. Now the nation can be taken off. Right? That's why the Most High God felt comfortable just getting rid of the whole nation. And now bloodlines can be mixed. You know what I'm saying? Because we, if bloodlines got mixed before that, then Most High God going to have a hard time proving out, how, proving out his promise. You know what I'm saying? So after you get Yahushua, kill Yahushua, he's going to be established forever. When I bring Yahushua back, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Because he's forever now. Then he can just prove out, I never let that, that promise fall. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Watch this. We'll talk about it. What verse we on? Uh, 16, what, 18. 18. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this in, here unto? Mm -hmm. And this was yet a small thing in your sight, O Lord God, but you have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. Mm -hmm. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? 
And what can David say more unto thee? Mm -hmm. For you, Lord God, know your servant. Mm -hmm. For your world, for your word's sake, and according to your own heart, have you done all these great things to make your servant know them? Drop, but, drop on down to uh, verse twenty-seven. For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has revealed to your servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Therefore, hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord God, you are that God, and thy words be true. And you have promised this goodness unto your servant. Therefore, now, let it please, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed for thee. Grab uh, chapter 9 now. <clears throat> so that's David's, you know what I'm saying, response. He was grateful for it. He was like, man, who am I? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build you a house, and who am I? Out of nowhere, you like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to build me a house, and you gave me this promise. He's like, man, who am I? I'm just like, I'm nothing. So he's just flattered by the old thing, just like, man. You know what I'm saying? Now go to uh, chapter 9. Watch this. This chapter 9, verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul? He said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul? What else we got? That I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Mm -hmm. And there was one, and there was. Ah, but you remember, okay. Go to, uh, so hold we got, we're going to come back there. Go to first. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 20. Watch this. It's 1 Samuel chapter 20. Give me verse like uh, 11. It's 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 11. And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. Uh-huh. Y'all remember this? Watch this. And they went out, both of, the, both of them, into the field. So you remember Jonathan? You remember, you remember when Saul was like, I'm going to kill David, and told his son Jonathan that. Then Jonathan was like, man, David, I got to let you know what's happening. And David was like, man, your pop's going to kill me. And Jonathan was like, man, I don't know if he really mean that. I'll tell you what. Before you just run off, let me holler at him. Let me see if he really about that. And then I'll come back, and I'll let you know. All right? So this is the conversation they had. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when have I sounded my father about tomorrow any time for the third day? And behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send it not unto you, and show it you. I can't eat that. You got to kill me first. The Lord do so and so and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do the evil, then I will show it to you. And send you away that you may go in peace. And the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. All right. Y'all remember we read this? Watch. Keep going. And you shall not only while yet I live. He said, you me, shall not only while I live. But what? Show me kindness of uh -huh. the Lord that I die not. But also that you shall not cut off the kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. So he, he, they made an agreement. They said, you know what, listen, my house, talking about Jonathan, in other words, anybody who come from him, right, you going to make sure you look out for my people, right? We always going to be cool. Even after I die, you look out for my people. Right? So now let's go back. This is this is second uh second Samuel chapter nine verse one. And watch notice the question that David has. David has a specific question because he's looking like, okay, this is it. We made it. Right? Saul is gone. I'm the king. I'm settled in. I moved the ark. Like we here now. So David's like, okay, now I got some lists I gotta check out. I got some agreements. I got some promises I gotta fulfill. Right? Let's hear about it. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. For Jonathan's sake. Right? Because Jonathan, I don't think Jonathan had kids, right? He had one. He had one? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So he's looking like, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to fulfill this promise. So for Jonathan's sake, is there anybody left? Let's hear about it. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are you Ziba? And mm -hmm. he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? Mm -hmm. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? 
And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Abiel, that was Abiel in Lo Deber. Then King David sent and fed him out of the house of Maker, the son of Emiel, from Lo Deber. Mm -hmm. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. All right, so the book said he was lame. So that means he had, like, issues, you know what I'm saying? He had somewhere, you know what I'm saying, he couldn't handle his body right, or, you know what I'm saying, his brain didn't work normally and all that. So he was looking at it, and the book was like, all right, you know what I'm saying, he is lame. He brought him in, and he came in, he just started, he started bowing down to him. He was lame on his feet, so he probably couldn't walk. So he started bowing down to him. He was looking like, oh, you know what I'm saying, let's do this, let's do this. He's happy. Because in our, in our day, you wouldn't get a whole lot of attention like that, you know what I'm saying, being lame. Wasn't nobody about to mess with you like that. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't come into the temple. So it's a lot of like you were outcast in society. We always have to take care of you. But you was an outcast. You know what I'm saying? So for the king to like go out his way and be like, yo. You know what I'm saying? It made him happy. So watch what happened. And David said unto him, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan your father's sake. Mm -hmm. And restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And you shall eat bread in my table continually. So he said you eat at the king's table continually. Right, it's a big deal, right? Keep going. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Mm -hmm. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and you shall bring him you shall bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So now, Ziba, it, it worked out for Ziba, too, right? Ziba was the servant. He was the person that was that was tasked with taking care of Mephibosheth. What was his name? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, right? So he was laying in his feet. He needed somebody to help him out, help him around, you know what I'm saying, take care of him. So he was the one, uh, Ziba, he was the one that was tasked with doing it. So that thing, just imagine, that thing work out. Like, you, you know what I'm saying, you like... Imagine like one of these social workers or something, you know what I'm saying, just working with the kids, just that and other, and they do that, that thing just a job. You know what I'm saying? Then out of nowhere, you find out like, oh, he came up on this huge inheritance. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to be the one to take care of him. All that's yours. You know what I'm saying? Like everything he got is yours. You just make sure you take care of the land, bring in everything, make sure he fed, this, that, and other. So in other words, you do the same job you've been doing, except you got this big old house now, and you got all these luxuries. You know what I'm saying? So that thing worked out. So now Ziba, who got 15 kids himself, he got a place to put all his kids and everything. It's pretty much his. You know what I'm saying? Like he get to share it with my, uh, Mephibosheth, right? With, with Mephibosheth. So that thing kind of worked out. Watch how it go. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that the Lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. Mm -hmm. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continu continually at the king's table and was lame on both feet. And that's how that thing worked out. That's how that thing worked out. Go to Matthew chapter, uh, what do I want? Give me Matthew chapter 5. Give me Matthew chapter 18. 18 what I want? Give me Matthew chapter 18. Give me about verse 7. I feel like that's not what I want. Yeah, I don't see much. Yeah, he's talking about the greatest that you know. Oh, that is what I want. Okay. Woe unto the world because of, uh, because of offenses. Uh -huh. For it must needs be that offenses come. Mm -hmm. For woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Uh -huh. That's why if your hand or foot offend thee, cut them off mm -hmm. and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Uh -huh. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter life and to, to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hellfire. Right? Keep going. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So notice, notice what he said. He said, you sin? Cut it off. Cut your leg off. Right? Cut your leg. It'd be better to go in with no legs. What was Mephibosheth problem? He had no legs. He is lame in the legs. His legs didn't work properly. Right? 
Remember, you could not enter into our congregation if you had what? Yeah. Any issue. Yes. We're blind. You couldn't go. You couldn't go get close to the to the tabernacle or anything. You know what I'm saying? Let's say let's say you ain't got both. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got your members, all right? Let's say you know what I'm saying. Let's say you only got one part of your member. You know what I'm saying? You weren't supposed to come in. You only got one leg. You were born with one leg. You weren't supposed to come in, right? Any of that, you not supposed to come in. But y'all, she would tell us when it comes to the kingdom, it'd be better that you came in that way than to be sinning. So that means, guess what? People who are lame and people who, who you know, what I'm saying, they they parts ain't working right. They but can get in. Grab uh, grab Matthew chapter five. It's a whole difference when when we talking about resurrection. You think so? You think the Most High God gonna take somebody? You know what I'm saying? Got a problem with their legs? They die. He resurrected. You think he gonna give them another problem with their legs? That thing not happening. He gonna give you a brand new body. You ain't gotta worry about that thing when resurrection comes. He gonna purge everybody. You gonna what? Uh, give me Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five, verse uh, one. What does the book say? And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was yet, when he was said, his disciples came unto him. Watch, the disciple came unto him. Watch, what was the disciples said? And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs are what? The kingdom of heaven. Uh oh, let's hear about it. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I mean, the ones that's out here crying, guess what? They're going to be the ones to get comforted. Blessed, what else? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit. Blessed are the what? Meek. Guess what fall in the category of meek? I don't know, probably the man who, you know what I'm saying, his legs don't work right. He is just so humble to have the king come to him and be like, you know what I'm saying, you can eat at my table. He was me. He going to inherit what? The earth. How you think Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth. How you think he felt? He inherited all his land by the king. What do you think Yahushua going to do for us? We operate in his life meek. He look at us, he gonna be like, you know what? Oh no, that's all this land yours. That's you. Just take care of it. The ones that serve, we serve. You know what I'm saying? We serve our brothers. You know what I'm saying? We do that. We look out for them. Guess what? You inherit that land. That land with them. You taking care of it. All right? That, that's how the thing work out. We have fathers, just like uh, Jonathan. We have fathers that had an agreement with the man. Right? We have fathers that had an agreement with the Most High God. So when they die, the Most High God looking at us like, oh, okay, I got to look out for your son. So when we die, we wake up to riches. You know what I'm saying? As long as we keep the man's or commandments. Right? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go to, I'm trying to see if we want to get into anything else real quick before we go. Where we leave off? Uh, 2 Samuel 9, 13. Let's go back to verse 13. Let's finish out 2 Samuel 9. Well, that was, that was the end of the show. Okay. All right. When we get back, we'll probably go into, we'll probably skip, uh, we'll probably talk a little bit about 10, but we'll probably go to jump over into 12. Um, but it's important that we see throughout our history, all this stuff testifies to the Messiah. Every single time we open up this book, you know what I'm saying? Whether I mention it or not, that thing tests by another. You know what I'm saying? Whether I notice it or not, that thing tests by another Messiah. That's a fact. All right? So we'll get into it. We'll try to go from there, kind of figure out where, where David goes. You know what I'm saying? It's not the end of the road for David yet. You know what I'm saying? Still a lot of stuff that has to happen. And then uh, and then we'll try to get into the end of David's life, probably not next week, but probably the, the week after. Any questions? Let's pray out.